A very good evening to all our viewers. I, Dr. Bhagishri, on behalf of Global Hospital Parel Mumbai, welcome you all for today's Facebook Live. So we have a very fascinated to a fascinating topic today, and that is uh, no more about robotics in urology, for which we have with us uh, Dr. Pradeep Rao, he, who is a director and senior consultant urology with 27 years of experience in this field. He completed his MBBS from Grand Medical College and Sir JJ Hospital Mumbai and DNB as well from, uh, from Patel Urological Hospital. He is a member of Indian Medical Association and Maharashtra <coughs> uh, Council. His expertise lies in cancer surgery, prostate laser surgery, kidney stone treatment and urinary tract infections, then uh, kidney transplants, both living and cadaveric transplants and robotic surgeries as well so welcome to the show sir thank you uh so so to begin with the first question for today uh can you tell us what why do we need robotics in urology so uh the history of robotics in urology is not a long one uh, robotic surgeries are being done in urology since about 25 years now and Basically, it's uh, it's not the robot which does the surgery. It's the surgeon who does the surgery using the robot as a tool to operate. So the surgeon sits at a console and there's a bedside surgeon who's helping him doing suction and putting clips. And the robotic surgeon, he controls the robotic instruments from the console and he can control the camera as well. So it's an advanced form of laparoscopy, which is basically keyhole surgery using a robot to facilitate the surgery. Now, the reason why the robot functions so well in urology, and urology is the main driver behind robotics, and it has been for the last 25 years, is because we have two or three surgeries which are uniquely suited to being used uh, for, for using the robot. Basically, kidney cancer, prostate cancer, and bladder cancer, bladder cancer. All three surgeries are extremely well done using the robot and has significant advantages over plain laparoscopy or open surgery. Now, you must understand that because robotic surgery is laparoscopic surgery, all the benefits of laparoscopic surgery are there in robotics over open surgery. There is a quick recovery and early going back to work for the patient and the patient getting uh, well very soon. But in addition, robotics gives you certain benefits over laparoscopy. And that, that is where it makes the difference. The robot which we currently use, the Intuitive Da Vinci XI, which is the latest generation robot, which we have here at Global. Uh, what it has is that it has a endo wrist, which has 360 degrees of movement, just like a human wrist. A laparoscopic instrument did not have this sort of movement. So the wrist can move 360 degrees. It gives you full freedom to operate. The second is that the magnification that the surgeon sees is up to 20 times. So his head is inside the console and he's getting a very magnified image. And the third thing is that all human tremor is taken out of the equation because you're using remote control instruments. The tremor is not transmitted to the instruments. And this makes a lot of difference uh, in using the robot. So doing fine surgery, uh, seeing structures better and much easier than you would do in open surgery. That's where the robot makes a real difference. Right, so oh, these uh, surgeries can be done laparoscopically, but they're a little better using the robot. Right, so uh, so, so moving ahead, uh, can you tell us uh, what all urology cases are done by robotics? So mainly uh, prostate cancer is removed using the robot. Uh, kidney cancer, where you want to preserve the kidney and remove only the cancerous tumor. Uh, this is much easier to do with the robot and has better outcomes than doing it laparoscopically or open. And bladder cancer, especially when you want to recreate a bladder from intestine so that the patient can pee from his normal passage. And that's a lot easier using the robot than in open or laparoscopy. These are the three main indications. At Global, we have one more indication which nobody else in the state of Maharashtra is doing, and that is robotic kidney transplant. We are now doing kidney transplants robotically, and that is a big advantage for the patients because there is no scar over the kidney. The kidney transplant used to be done with a muscle cutting incision. Now we can do it without any muscle cutting. And because these 
patients are immunosuppressed. The incision heals much better because they're not mixing with the urine and they're not over the kidney. That's one of the big advantages of robotic kidney transplant. Uh, so moving further, can you highlight on the recent advances in uh, robotics and urology? So with with the XI system which we have now, uh, we have the ability to change the angle of the telescope with just a press of a button, which makes a big difference to the surgery of getting better angles to operate. We have Firefly, which is a technology which can highlight vascular structures and vascularized structures. So we can see which part of the kidney to cut and which part of the kidney not to cut. It can also help us to identify lymph nodes when we're doing cancer surgeries. And after transplant, it can help us to identify if the kidney is fully vascularized or not. So Firefly is a very important technology. And uh, the, this is available in the robotic uh, uh, system which we are using. Right. Uh, so knowing now what is robotics and how uh, it works, so can you tell us uh, the comparison between a robotic surgery and the open surgeries which we had earlier? So when you do an open surgery for a kidney, say, you have to remove a rib and take an 18-inch 18, 18 incision, which is one and a half feet. It's like cutting the patient in half. With robotic, you're just doing four small keyholes and... Uh, the, the rest of the surgery inside is of course the same, but the external access to the kidney is uh, just uh, four holes of eight millimeters. And what happens with this is that after robotic surgery, the patient is pain free within a month. He's actually on very minimal pain and no painkillers within a few days. And he's back to normal work within a week. The maximum that he'll feel even the internal surgery, which is the same as a month. Well, after open surgery, this period is nine months for the patient to fully recover because they have removed a rib and we have removed uh, uh, when we've done the same surgery inside. But the 18-inch incision, which is a muscle cutting incision, takes time to heal. So that's a big, huge difference between robotic and open. In addition, you can do things with robotic surgery, which you couldn't do with open surgery, that like saving the kidney when there is kidney cancer, to remove only the cancerous portion and save the rest of the kidney. Now, this is a big difference. Uh, in fact, after the advent of robotic surgery, the incidence of removing the entire kidney for cancer has gone down dramatically. Uh, although in India, we still do see patients at a late stage. In the Western world, because they're found early, uh, it's a rare operation now to remove the whole kidney for kidney cancer. And even at global, it's much commoner for, for us to save the kidney than to remove it in kidney cancer. And this is one of the big advantages of robotics. Right. Uh, also, sir, like if you could have taught, you could tell us about the differences in robotic surgery compared to laparoscopic surgery. So, like I mentioned, that say if, when we are doing a prostate cancer surgery, there are there's a trifecta we call of cancer control, continence, which is maintaining urinary control, and potency, which is restoring erectile function to the patient. In this trifecta, the cancer control is equal between laparoscopy and robotics. But return to continence is much faster with robotics. And the potency part, restoring erectile function to patients with prostate cancer, is much, much better with robotics than with laparoscopy. In fact, I would go to say that it's very difficult to do this in laparoscopy, and it requires somebody with a huge experience. Like I've been doing laparoscopic surgery for the prostate cancer for more than 25 years now. But there are very few people with that sort of experience. It's much easier to start doing this uh, nerve preserving with robotic surgery than with uh, laparoscopy. And of course, like I mentioned, the uh, advantages we get in the angles we can suture with the 360 degree wrist, we can save more kidneys which have cancer with the robot than we could do with pure laparoscopy or open surgery because we get angles we wouldn't be able to get otherwise. And a vision and an ability to dissect inside the kidney. So we can just clip the vessel which is leading to the tumor and preserve the rest of the kidney function. This is especially important in diabetic patients who need uh, uh, to uh, preserve as much kidney function as possible. Um, so, so does it mean that as robotic surgeries are on the rise, so it will lead to a cut down of uh, the count of doctors? 
No, not really. I mean, the robotic surgery takes a little less time or sometimes a little more time than open surgery, depending on the procedure. And the number of doctors is not going to change because it's not that a doctor can do the surgery faster because he's doing it to the robot. Uh, the time factor, I don't think, changes much. But the patient's uh, number of days away from work and number of days lost to a medical problem definitely does go down tremendously. So it helps society as a whole to uh, uh, reduce the lost hours due to illness. Uh, so what preparations does a patient have to do before a robotic surgery? Uh, the routine preparations for any surgery, they need to uh, be fasting for about six hours. They need to make sure they move their bowels the night previously. They need to see the anesthetist well before surgery to make sure that you know they're fit for the surgery because the anesthesia part is the same for whichever type of surgery you are doing and we don't want to take any risks in all these cases because they're elective cases most surgeries the robot are elective cases and not emergencies uh, we do have reconstructive urology with the robot because it facilitates suturing in difficult places so other than the cancer surgeries and transplants which i mentioned a lot of reconstructive surgery like pyeloplasties for congenital conditions, for pediatric patients. We do a lot of these using the robot as well because it's, it's so much easier to suture and it is facile. So that does make a difference. Right, sir. Uh, so uh, can you tell us what progress has uh, robotic surgery made in prostate cancer surgeries? Yeah, so like I mentioned, uh, the trifecta is very important, cancer control, uh, continence and nerve sparing and all these three are far far better today than with what we had in open surgery in addition the learning curve to learn a robotic prostatectomy is 15 to 20 cases where for laparoscopy and open surgery it was close to 100 cases so it's much easier for me to train my residents to do a prostatectomy using the robot than uh, uh, with open or laparoscopy so what you were asking earlier about number of surgeons. You are actually getting a getting more number of surgeons who are able to do these complex surgeries because the learning curve with the robot is so much shorter. So in less number of cases, you can train somebody to do this procedure. So they are uh, they are able to offer their services elsewhere so that more patients can benefit with this robotic surgery. Uh, so, so is it that uh, robotic surgery leaves minimal scars compared to the other surgeries? Yes, because it's keyhole surgery. Okay. And usually we take only internal sutures. There are no stitches to be removed. Just a few dressings which are to be removed every week. Uh, the oh. cars are very less and uh, much more cosmetic than what you would get with open surgery. Right, sir. So uh, if you could tell us the risks associated with robotic surgeries. So the main risks are uh, that those of anesthesia and positioning. But other than this, of course, the important thing is the surgeon should know his limitations. Just because he has a robot in his hand doesn't mean that he'll be able to do the, any procedure. You need a surgeon who's well trained in doing this these procedures, not just robotically, but who has a good amount of experience in doing, you know, these are complex procedures. And you want to make sure that the people are well trained in this procedure before you go in for it. So I'm sure that with time, we'll have a lot of surgeons who are experienced to doing these procedures. But uh, yeah, the number is slowly growing. And uh, that's one of the major risk factors of robotics. The other specific problems that we have, a positional problem in patients with prostate cancer. When we do a robotic surgery, they, there's a lot of pressure on the shoulders. There's a lot of pressure on the belly, on the chest. So the anesthetist has to be careful of all these things. We have an excellent team of anesthesiologists headed by Dr. Parak and uh, I think they are quite experienced because we've been doing laparoscopy for so long at handling the robotic surgeries. And that's that's a good thing for us because it helps tremendously in our work to be stress-free as far as the patient's wellness is concerned. Right, sir. So, so uh, one more question. Is it that uh, after post-surgery, uh, post-robotic surgery, uh, there is minimal pain experienced by the patients? Yes, absolutely. The, because there's no muscle cutting incisions, there's very little pain. 
if you're doing a purely reconstructive surgery, there's no incision at all other than these small keyholes which we put in. And even if you're doing something like prostate cancer or a small kidney tumor, which you'll take out only the tumor, they don't really need a big incision to take it out. So recovery is much faster from these incisions. Almost all patients will be back to normal work within a week after surgery. And uh, so what is the usual recovery period for uh, people with robotic surgeries? It depends on the surgery. For a transplant, I would say a week to 10 days. For a prostate cancer, one week. Bladder cancer, maybe two weeks. And kidney cancer, three or four days. Another reconstructive surgery is also less than a week. Right, sir. Uh, so, so uh, lastly, what take-home message would you like to give to our viewers? I think you need to accept the advances in medicine as they come. And, you know, the average lifespan of the Indian male uh, when I joined med school 40 years back was 52. Now it is 74. So that difference which you're seeing is the true miracle of modern medicine and where it has taken us. And the thing about medicine is, is evidence-based treatment. We only do something which is scientific and backed by evidence. And this is very, very important. And uh, because we can do that, we can improve the lives and improve the survival rate of human beings. Uh, and in India, we have had such a phenomenal run for the last 40 or 50 years in improvement in uh, the devices and gadgets available to us and the newer treatments. I think we can safely say that medical treatment in India today is equal to almost anywhere in the world. And uh, uh, we are second to none in providing quality medical care. And that's one of the reasons that uh, lives of people have been so much improved here. Right, sir. So just before ending this session, I would like to ask you one last question. That would be, uh, what, are there any disadvantages for robotic surgeries? I mean, the, the cost is a disadvantage. Until we have competition in the robotic market, and right now there are one or two competitors, but they're not the quality that the intuitive uh, surgical Da Vinci X I can produce. And once those competitors get there, and they will, it's only a matter of time, maybe a few years, then we will have uh, prices rationalizing. But till that time, as long as we have a monopoly situation, the prices continue to be a little high. And uh, doing a robotic surgery or a laparoscopy or a conventional open surgery does add some, something to your cost. But because you're getting back to work much faster, you're recovering better and getting better outcomes, one can justify this additional cost because in the long run, you save money when you go back to work earlier and you're able to function with your family better than sitting in a hospital bed waiting to get better. And also in the long run, with lower complications, the uh, average amount a patient spends, I feel with robotics in the long run, will actually go down as compared to what they would spend otherwise. So although the initial cost may be a little high for the patient, in the long run, they probably save money using robotic surgery. Thank you, sir. Uh, I appreciate you taking the time to enlighten our viewers regarding the uh, topic robotics and neurology and the progress it has made these years. And uh, thank you, viewers, for such keen listening. And we will be back next week uh, with some other interesting topic. Till then, stay tuned and stay healthy. Thank you. Thanks, Bhagishi. Thank you, sir.